Welcome to Monet Cafe. I'm artist Susan Jenkins, and I'm gonna share with you how to get soft effects using pastel and yes, gouache. I don't think I've done a video using gouache before. This is gouache paint applied to pastel matte, a colored surface. And I'm gonna share with you why I love combining gouache and pastel in this way. So I'll be sharing a lot about my products, a lot about the techniques, and it should be a lot of fun. I mean, this little guy was just so adorable. And this original painting, while it's still available, will be offered in my Etsy shop. I'll have a link for that in the description of this video. Also too, I am providing some printables for you on a site that I have called Coffee. I like it, Coffee, Monet Cafe. But if you go to my little shop, you'll be able to purchase for only $2 the printables that I made. The printables are two pages, a right and a left, and I'm gonna be sharing in the video with you how you can use it to transfer an image and get started. Also, my patrons don't have to buy the printable because if you're a patron of mine, it's only $5 a month, you get all these goodies for free. And if you haven't subscribed yet, I hope you will. I think you'll love it here. Okay, here we go. Hello and welcome to Monet Cafe. I'm artist Susan Jenkins, and normally I don't film when my studio is this messy, but I've been doing a lot of painting and I didn't have time to straighten up. Also, I wanted to go ahead and share with you something I just discovered that I'm very excited about. I often work with wet mediums on certain surfaces to do a pastel painting on top. It's called an underpainting. And there's a lot of pastel papers that are water friendly, such as pastel matte and I have recently been working mostly on white pastel matte because it's white and I can do like a watercolor underpainting or use acrylic inks or recently like I've been using wax pastels, I can wet them and the color will be very vibrant because the paper is white. Well, I've hesitated on using wet mediums on pastel matte that is colored because, you know, how would you do a watercolor painting on pastel matte? if it's colored, it's got a colored surface. The watercolor, you know, it's translucent, so it's not gonna show up. So, let me scoot over here so I can show you this uh, surface. So I recently, I'm gonna be doing this cute little painting of this little chipmunk, thanks to A.R. Mason. What a lovely photograph. Um, she's one of my patrons and she shared that photograph. So pastel matte comes in colors. And I'll first tell you a little bit about pastel matte. It's a surface that works great with pastels. You may know sanded surfaces are awesome for pastel painting. But what's interesting about pastel matte, I was so shocked the first time that I um, got some. It's not, it has a nice little um, piece of glass in between every page. It doesn't feel sanded, and yet it takes nice amounts of layering. Um, and this particular pad comes with, it's called number four. It comes with wine, dark blue, light blue, and sand, okay? So you get four different color types in this pad. All right, back to the dilemma. I couldn't really do a watercolor painting on this. Again, watercolor is translucent. It's gonna show through. You're not gonna get the color. It won't even show up. So I decided to try gouache. Now, if you know a little bit about the difference between watercolor and gouache, uh, what's the difference? Watercolor is translucent and gouache is opaque. And it kind of depends on how much water you add to it. But I realized because it's opaque, behaves a little bit more like acrylic paint, I can use gouache to do an underpainting on colored pastel water-friendly papers. And pastel matte is awesome. It receives wet medium so nicely. So I did a little test down here. Another thing that's really nice is it has a real neutral feel to it when you apply it, especially the colors that I'm choosing here. And I thought that would be perfect for this wonderful reference photo because I wanted to keep some of these background flowers a bit more neutral. I wanted to push those back and have the chipmunk, obviously, and some of these foreground flowers as the main focal point. And that will be perfect for adding pastel to. So I'm excited about this. Um, say a prayer for me that it comes out as good as I'm hoping and I think it should be a lot of fun. All right guys, here we go. 
The gouache paints I'll be using are from Arteza. I got the 60 set. I'll be sharing more about this as well. And I bought a set, or actually I didn't buy it. Arteza gives me products for free. Thank you, Arteza. And I use them in my videos. But I bought this 48 pan empty set to put my gouache paints in. Now, look, can you notice that they're all dried up? I work with gouache paints when they're wet, but they're kind of like watercolor. If you wait and let them dry, you can just re-wet them. I thought I'd show you the sets on the Arteza website. This is the set of 24 for $21.99. This is the set of 60 for $44.99. And because you can mix colors with this medium, you could really just go with the smaller set. You'll see me, or this set you saw before, is the empty watercolor palette, it's called, but you can put gouache paint in it. There's 48 little sections in there, but they also have a set of 24. There's not that big of a price difference. You might as well get the 48. Also, the pastel matte that I'll be using is from this pad that's on dickblick.com and this is the 12 by 16 pad with four colors this stuff is not cheap so they also have a size on Amazon that's a 9 by 12 and it's on sale right now for around $30 and as I always say use what you have there are so many different possibilities in creating this painting now I'll also be using a combination of brushes. I'm showing a lot of brushes here, but I really use primarily a watercolor brush. You'll see it's called a Chinese watercolor brush. Now this is the printable I'm talking about. Basically you print out both sides. You have to cut the little white edge down the center, tape it together, put it up to a bright window. You're gonna turn it backwards, okay? And then you'll be able to see the image. You can't hear it because it's on my easel. And what I did, I took a charcoal pencil and I traced the outline of some of the foliage and the chipmunk. Now you can't see it here, but I used white, a white charcoal pencil to mark where like the lighter elements were, the baby's breath. And uh, here is what you do. You tape it to your surface and you get something that can rub really hard. It's like a burnishing tool. A credit card would work and it leaves a little ghost image as a result and it really worked great now I don't often do a tracing method like this but sometimes it's a good start especially if you've got something that's a little bit more um, detailed like this chipmunk and now we can get started. Oh, I love my essential oils while I paint. Okay, here is, I have my second camera where you can see my gouache paints. I've got some real time right here. I will be speeding this up. This painting, I think it took over three hours. There was a lot of little details and things. And of course, by doing the gouache painting as an underpainting, I, um, that definitely took more time as well. So what I'm doing is I'm just mixing up. Now, if you let your gouache paints dry like I do, sometimes you have to add, you know, a decent amount of water to swirl around to get them re-wetted. And uh, I'm combining colors here. And I know this video is not a color mixing video. There's so much I'd love to share, but it, the video would be way too long. But what I'm doing is I'm trying to get those minty colored um, foliage and leaves and flowers in the background. And I apologize that I can't have both my paint palette and my reference image in the same shot here. The editing program I'm using only allows for one image to be inserted. Uh, I do have another uh, editing program I'm going to be using soon that does allow for that. I just haven't taken the time to get super familiar with it. Uh, so much to do. <laughs> but anyway, so I'm mixing up some of these minty greens. And as I use this gouache, I want to talk a little bit about it. Also, I want to mention here is that watercolor brush I mentioned. It's a Chinese watercolor brush. And I got mine on Amazon. I'll try to provide a link in the description of this video. But the set that I got, it came with three. They're no longer available. So I'll see if I can find something similar. What I love about this brush is, you see how large it is? You can use it to, it holds a lot of water. You can put a lot of water and paint in it and get big wide strokes. But it also goes to a really fine tip. So you can get little fine points. You can do fine lines. You can lay it on its side and get kind of a dry brush effect. So I think I literally used this brush for the whole painting. Maybe another little brush for something. But for the most part, the entire gouache painting was done with this one Chinese watercolor brush. So I'm just analyzing colors and values, mixing colors. Now, mixing colors is not something we really do with pastels when I start the pastels. Um, I often like to say, 
you can mix pastel colors, but it's not in this method. You can't like wet them and mix them like you do with gouache or acrylic or watercolor or oil. And But you can do a little bit of color mixing on the surface by how you lay the pastels down. So, um, But once again, I am mixing colors and you get better at this based on just experience how much you do it. I also recommend whether you're using gouache um, or watercolor um, to make you a color guide. This particular little gouache set, I don't even think I've done it with this one. I need to do it. I, I did a color guide of every single color that I got in the Arteza 60 gouache set, um, but I only applied 48 colors in this little um, travel or palette that they have, an empty pan palette. And so I've got to do that myself. But what you do is you go ahead and make you something that shows every single color uh, in um, order of how your palette looks so that you can see what it looks like applied. Watercolor and gouache, well, and other wet mediums too, they look very different um, dry than they do wet. That's one neat thing about pastels. They look pretty much exactly the same if you're holding it in your hand and you apply it to your surface. The only thing that can be different is what you apply it next to. It does kind of a, affect the color and the value, um, whether it's on a dark surface or light surface or next to other colors. Um, so you can see here how I'm just really keeping a little loose effect. Um, and I like to work the whole. You'll notice that I try to um, maximize if I'm working with a certain color going ahead and putting it in other places instead of you know having to try to remix that same color again later so I will work the whole painting if I see that color somewhere else I go ahead and add it there and I think it's more efficient um, you can paint faster that way um, I have never been able to be an artist who can just paint from one little area and work out with detail like that. I've seen artists do it and it amazes me, um, but I like to work the whole, so that's why you see me kind of working around. Now, this white charcoal and dark charcoal that I've applied, one neat thing about it is it's very much um, akin to pastels, like the texture and the substance of the pastels. So it works great as an underpainting for that, but it also worked really great with this gouache. I was able to just apply, um, you know, the gouache right on top of it. And um, this was a lot of fun. I have to say this was really relaxing to me. And I loved, now let me get back to one of the points about this video. Um, three things. I loved how soft it appeared on this pastel matte surface. I will also have a link to the pastel matte in the description of this video, and I'll talk a little bit more about the product um, soon as well. But I loved how soft the gouache appeared. I also loved how I was able to get such a, a neutral feel. Okay, it had a soft effect, and I was able to get some really nice neutral colors. I'll be talking more too about um, focal point. Getting neutral and soft effects really helps you to establish focal point because the things that you want to be focused you're going to have not quite so neutral, not quite so soft, a little bit more detail, a little bit more edge to it. And so the gouache worked great in this reference photo for being able to push back those flowers that I did not want to get center stage. Um, I also apologize that my camera, um, you can see me when I mix the paints down there, but I tried to put it on autofocus lock where it locked into just the palette, but it keeps focusing on my arm. So I'm probably soon going to just go ahead and put up the reference image because I really don't think with it this small, there's a whole lot that you can see, but at least it gives you a little bit of an idea. All right, so this was all real time here. I'm going to speed up the gouache section um, until I get to the pastel portion. And, uh, but I am going to talk to you a little bit more uh, while I paint. And now I put the reference image up for you to be able to look at as I paint. And as you can probably see, there are so many nice neutral greens and 
um, just some real subdued colors in the flowers that are behind the chipmunk. And then there's some beautiful bold purples and, um, and then those uh, baby's breath that are in the front are a really nice contrast. So as I paint, I'll be talking a little bit more about focal point as well. And that's one of the main reasons I got so excited about using gouache as an underpainting. I felt I had so much control over being able to create a soft, subtle, and neutral feel. And I think the reason for that is because with gouache paint or watercolor, or other wet mediums, unlike with pastel, you can change the intensity of it based on how much water you add. So with some of these, I am um, mixing a color up a little stronger, less water, and so it'll be a little darker, and then I can add a little more water. It's a little thinner, and it doesn't go on with quite the intensity. Uh, I'm also in control of being able to mix the colors. Like I said, a little bit unlike pastels, you can't mix them quite in the same way. So I'm able to create colors uh, that have more neutrality by simply combining Here's a little trick for making neutral colors. You combine the complement. You see my color wheel over there up to the upper right. Um, it's usually a good idea to keep a pocket color wheel on hand, but when you combine, combine complements, that just means the color opposite on the color wheel. So it would be like purple and yellow or red and green. And you combine those opposites on the color wheel and it creates a neutral tone. And if you need to lighten it up, you just add white. So I was able to create my own neutrals or tone some things down by making them a little more neutral with this painting in gouache. And here you'll see where I am working on the darks. If you look at the reference photo, you can see there is a, a darker flower kind of behind his head. Now it's not going to stay this dark. Um, the thing that's neat about gouache is because it's opaque, similar to pastels and oils, you can, and acrylics, you can lay darker values down and layer lighter values on top. Unlike watercolor, because watercolor is translucent, you have to work opposite. You have to work light to dark. You don't want to lose your light values. Uh, you want to preserve the lights. So that's one neat thing about gouache is that it layers similar to pastels. So you don't have to work kind of backwards in your thinking when it comes to layering. So you can see uh, the flower that I added behind his head there. I layered some of that periwinkle blue on top. Now I know I'm going to be adding pastels. I can lighten them up even more, um, but I'm wanting to get a basic idea of my values in. And once again, I like working the whole. And here I'm adding some of the lighter values. I know I'm going to be adding more darks to it as well, but this was more of, um, I call it my color notes or my road map. Um, once again, seeing where things are, I want to create a overall uh, layout composition of my painting and then I can start working on other things just to get things right and as I mentioned before about doing the the little transfer that I did of the chipmunk I don't often paint that way the only exception when I do it is like now I I really did want to get to painting so I thought mm, let's go ahead and do this rather than me just taking the time to tediously sketch it out I know most of you if you've watched my channel long you see I normally sketch from scratch but if you're doing an animal or a person sometimes just to get a little bit of a frame of reference does help um, the only other exception to where I will um, do some sort of image transfer uh, is if I'm working very large, sometimes it's a little easier to block things in in that way. But I always like to stress good sketching and drawing skills is a foundation to good art and beautiful paintings. So don't shortcut learning how to sketch and sketch from what I like I say sketch from scratch All right, now I'm working on getting in some of these pink flowers another thing I wanted to make note of is often with gouache uh, applying it to this kind of rosy colored pastel mat you notice how those flowers dried a lot lighter there um, 
you have to keep in mind that sometimes just by wetting the surface it's going to look a little darker um, so you need to kind of let it dry now i took my reference image away here because i wanted to show you how i'm using this chinese watercolor brush for a dry effect i have my paint to water ratio um, to where there's more paint than water and i'm laying it on its side and you see how i'm able to get kind of those rough broken strokes and it gave the impression or the feel of kind of how that wood texture would be rough now i do go in and add some other values to this um, but i just wanted to point that out i really love this brush it is so versatile here i'm really speeding up this little short section because i want to get to another technique that i use that i just sort of discovered and it worked pretty well so check out how i use a q-tip since the point of my Chinese watercolor brush was so pointy, I thought, you know what, let me try a Q-tip. And so I alternated the consistency uh, and the value of the gouache paints that I used to give the impression of some of these being um, a little bit more buried. They're going to be a little darker in value, a little cooler in color temperature when the, and smaller if they're kind of in those deep areas. And they'll gradually get a little bit brighter and larger as they come to the surface. This uh, is where I added a, a decent amount of water to it and it caused them to have such a nice subtle look with no hard edges. All right, back to getting in some of my values. As you can see, I'm getting close to having the whole background finished with gouache and I know I'm gonna put pastel over this um, so even though it looks kind of really soft that's exactly what I was going for and I'm gonna keep some of those areas very soft but then choose the areas to have more vibrancy where there will be more focal point and I'm gonna be talking about focal point more very soon and no I haven't forgotten about little chipmunk I was asking on uh, Instagram and some of the other social media sites or saying I hadn't named them yet anybody have a name idea and I think it was um, uh, yeah it was Bethany Fields oh she's such an amazing pastel artist um, and she's just precious and beautiful so I think she's the one who said how about Alvin like Alvin and the chipmunks if you've had kids and uh, I guess that's all over the world. I don't know. But in the States, I know Alvin and the Chipmunks was a cute little um, cartoon. And uh, anyway, so I think this is Alvin. I like that. Uh, so this is the same strategy, um, but I'm just working on the, um, uh, the Chipmunk, which does have a little bit more things have to be precise on him, especially his little face and his little eye. There's a, a light area around his eye, and also there's that little highlight which is often so typical uh, in the eye with people and animals and it really does give that three-dimensional feel i've zoomed in a bit here so you can see notice that uh chinese watercolor brush look at that point um somebody i think it was in one of my facebook groups um, was like what is that you're using it looked like a piece of wood because <laughs> the bristles were all splayed out um, but anyway so now I've kind of purposely splayed out the bristles to get a little bit more width and it actually creates some nice fur to this brush so um, so yeah I'm definitely a fan of this brush okay so in order to keep this video from being so incredibly long i'm going to really speed up the rest of the chipmunk painting portion that's in gouache so that we can get to pastel hopefully you got the idea with what i've presented so far so i'm gonna add a little music here and it'll just be a couple minutes and i'll be back with the pastel portion and by the way this song is from the youtube audio library it's called dance of the fireflies by nathan moore enjoy Here is a quick 
glimpse of the pastels I'll be using. I used primarily this set of Unison 120 half stick set. I love buying half sticks because you literally get double the pastel for your money, uh, double the colors, and plus I don't like removing labels anyway, and usually when you buy half stick they don't have labels. Also, they're already the nice little perfect size for me. I typically break the larger pastels anyway, so I find half sticks are the way to go. And this set, just so you know, is kind of all-inclusive. You have some great color, great values, and some neutrals. I love how the palette is arranged according to uh, value. If you kind of look in the middle and then go out to the edges, it gets lighter at the outer edges, top to bottom in this uh, video here. So anyway, I'm not inserting this down into the bottom, even though I tried to time it right with my painting. I, I'm not sure if you guys can even see it good enough anyway. So I'd love for you guys to comment and say in the past few videos where I've tried to put that in, if it's even working. So I would love your feedback. All right, guys, let's get to the pastel portion. I've sped this up ever so slightly, but what I'm doing now is I am going in and brightening some areas or giving a little bit more color or refining some edges by using the pastels. Notice how, oh, it had that nice, cool green. Look at that. And a cool green is basically a green that leans a little more towards blue rather than yellow. And this image had a lot of those cooler green colors anyway, so I really liked it. Now, let me mention another advantage to using gouache or watercolor. If you're working on white pastel matte, you could use watercolor. But when you use those types of wet mediums on a surface like this, what you've done, you've allowed to get your painting started in a really neat way, and you haven't used up any of the, what we call tooth, of a pastel surface like this. Even though pastel matte doesn't feel like it's got a sanded surface, it does have the ability to take layers. So with gouache, you have not taken or compromised any layers in this. So it's like you're working from fresh, uh, which is really kind of neat. Um, now I'm showing here, that would be a warmer green, that would be a cooler green, leaning more towards blue. So hopefully that helps. That's why I said it's good, just keep a pocket color wheel near you. It has so much great information on it anyway. You may have noticed in the gouache portion that I preserved or reserved painting the chipmunk until last. And even though I've done a little bit of pastel work here, I wanted to go ahead and get in um, some of the chipmunk. Really, I think I pretty much finished the chipmunk and then move on to the flowers. The reasoning is the flowers, I already have them as, I wouldn't say complete, but some of the background flowers, I don't do a whole lot more to. Once again, the neutral, the subtlety of it, um, it's, it's gonna keep them looking like they're behind him. I'm actually talking here if you see my jaw moving. Um, but I want the chipmunk to be the focal point. You may notice right now he is a little dull. And one of the methods for creating a focal point is to have brighter, bolder, um, more saturated color. So he's gonna get more color. I thought I'd zoom in here and show you. He's got some interesting markings around his eye and uh, accuracy with respect to animals and anatomy, uh, things like that are very important. So I'm using these big old chunky pastels to get into some kind of small spaces. And I often have people ask me, how, do you, how can you even tell where it's going? Uh, because often the pastel is getting in the way of your view, but you actually learn to work by feel, by just pressing. You make a little test mark, you can kind of see where it is, and then you're literally working from the touch rather than the visual. So his eye also had some neat color to it. Um, often what I'll do, people ask me a lot is, how did you see that color there? I wouldn't have put purple in the eye or blue in the eye. I look for little subtleties of color that may just be there. If you also just learn the rules of how color works, you're almost able to see through my glasses there. Um, you can um, punch things up with respect to the rules of color. And so I knew a lot of times a little highlight or a little something in the eye is gonna have those cooler tones. I worked on the background a bit more to just establish some things, and then I go back to the chipmunk to go ahead and finish him out. Uh, I, and the way I like to work in life and in art is I like to tackle the harder things first, usually, so that the rest is more fun. <laughs> and the chipmunk is definitely, I, I shouldn't say harder, just more tedious. So now you can see how I'm getting in 
darker values. That's another, a third thing with focal point, which is actually called contrast. When you have areas of contrast, that means dark and lights next to each other. Um, our brains, our eyes usually go to that by default and as opposed to neutral things. So in this painting, I am making it a goal to give him darker values, more contrast, which will definitely intensify his focal point energy. Also too, another great thing about this reference photo is that he gets a focal point, little Alvin gets a focal point um, advantage right away because do you notice anything about him that's different from the rest of the painting? I mean, other than the fact that he's an animal, <laughs> um, but do you see a color difference? Notice the chipmunk is primarily warm in his color tones and the background is more cool. Um, there are a few warmer greens I add, but not many. And so that makes little Alvin the star of the show for sure. So I think that's four things now I've talked about with focal point. And I do have a video on focal point. I think it's five ways to create a focal point. And I really liked creating that video. A lot of times I learn a lot when I'm creating videos because I research a lot. And um, so that would be one I think that would be very advantageous for you. Um, learning focal point, I find uh, with my patrons in my Patreon group, um, I have something that's called Critique My Painting, Please. And my patrons usually once a month, as long as my life isn't having too much drama in it, in it which it does at the moment, um, as long as I can, I have a little Critique My Painting session and they are able to upload their paintings. And I choose a few of them that I think will benefit the group as a whole. I don't even like the word critique. I call it constructive critique criticism. And so I give them suggestions on how to uh, maybe improve things a bit. And a lot of times it has to do with focal point. Um, I also like to mention with focal point, it's best to keep your focal energy, interest, and attention not along the edges of the painting. Think of, you know, how you can do photo editing and you can do what's called an ellipse around the edges. Usually it blurs out like an oval around your painting. The outer edges get a little um, softer, uh, lighter usually, um, and that is a great way to keep the eye in the painting. In other words, you're not having some high contrast or highly saturated color out on the edge of your painting, which is gonna pull the eye right out of the painting. So focal point is something that I find, if, you've, if you're advancing in your art and you're feeling good, and but you know, you're just wondering why you're not going past another level, a lot of times it has to do with establishing a clear and beautiful focal point. So you may have noticed too, I added some blues in his little stripe there and a couple of blues in other areas. Um, his tail, back to focal point, I didn't want to give his tail a, a dark, dark, it's not super dark in the reference photo anyway. You can tell it's black based on just the markings of the chipmunk, um, but it was softer than the rest of the darker elements. Oh, by the way, that little tool I'm using, it looks like a makeup brush applicator. You could use a makeup brush applicator. Uh, I don't have many of those. <laughs> I don't like to wear makeup that much, but I do have those little applicators that are for pan pastels. I've got to do another tutorial using pan pastels. They're literally like little round, they look like a makeup compact, like a circular thing, and they have pastels in this little round palette, and you use tools like a paintbrush to paint with it. So that's that's one of those pan pastels blenders and it worked really great. I don't like to do a lot of blending in my artwork, but sometimes with something like this little chipmunk, if I want to knock something down a bit with respect to um, value or color intensity or take an edge or detail away, you can use some sort of a little blending tool to do that. And I'm about at 33 minutes into this video editing production right now. And I like to keep my videos under an hour for multiple reasons, but I am speeding it up, but I'm also gonna talk a little bit more 
notice that I'm using some warmer values here and that is once again another thing that will create the focal point to be what I want it to be which is this chipmunk I did like that I you know added the little bits you see some of the blue like I said in the stripe and a little bit of the uh, blues and purples in the tail and like behind his little ear there and what that does is it creates a cohesiveness to the painting even though he is primarily warm if I didn't have any cool colors in him at all he would feel um, almost pasted on so it does create a um, congruency in your painting when you are able to use some of the same colors throughout the whole painting I really love that dark I have right there that's a Terry Ludwig dark it's part of their their dark set um, so every so often you will see that I grab another pastel uh, other than the unisons I think I grabbed some neutrals that I just have in my regular workshop palette that I've accumulated over the years um, and some of those Terry Ludwig darks Terry Ludwig also makes a wonderful pastel and the people at the company are so awesome so um, all right I think I'll add a little music now you guys enjoy and by the way it really does help if you just take a moment and click that little thumbs up on this video and even leave me a comment I love to get your feedback it helps me to uh, make these videos better and more like what you want and what you want to see so I really appreciate that effort I'm also loving how you guys are tagging me on social media and sharing your recreations from these tutorials on Instagram you can find me at Susan Jenkins artist you can find my Facebook page it's the art of Susan Jenkins and of course we have two Facebook groups the Monet Cafe art group on Facebook anybody can join you just have to answer a few questions and then I have my private uh, patreon Facebook group it's a little more intimate with my patrons I can uh, give you guys more feedback see your work so that's another little uh, benefit of becoming a patron all right I know I said I was gonna add the music back but I wanted to mention here I forgot I used some pastel pencils in this painting I don't use pastel pencils often but I thought with his fur it might be nice I'm mostly just getting some scratchy marks and I have the 48 set they do have smaller sets and pastel pencils work great on this pastel matte surface my set of pastel pencils has lasted me for years but that's probably because I don't use them all that often and now I'm really going to add that music so you guys enjoy and I will be back soon.
point you can see how I have added some of the baby's breath and what I've done is if you look I know I'm working on something else now but if you look deep in there you'll see there are they're not all white and and actually this isn't a pure white that I've added the brightest uh, lightest value that you see um, most of the baby's breath are more of a neutral color because there's so many of them behind one another and deeper into the foliage. I have really enjoyed this discovery of using gouache with pastel on this lovely pastel matte surface. I hope you learned a lot. This is the cute little final. And once again, it is available in my Etsy shop. Um, sometimes they sell before you might see it. So if you don't see it in there, it's gone. But I also have prints and products available on my Fine Art America account, and they do such great work. And someone recently asked why this painting wasn't available in my Etsy shop. Well, it's sold right after the video was created. So Fine Art America is a great way for you to be able to buy prints and other products of my art. And I really do love this company. I've been using them for years. So all of those things can be found in the description of this video and in all of these places here on this end screen. And I want to say a personal thank you. The success of Monet Cafe is because of you. You are Monet Cafe. All right, guys, be blessed and happy painting.